All right, so for the following graphs, we're going to describe the relationship and trend of the two variables, draw our line of best fit, and identify any outliers. So, when I look at this data, we're comparing the reading score versus the writing score of students. Um, it does not look very strong to me, but before I do anything, I am going to try to get that line of best fit on there. So, if I was going to draw one on, I'm trying to again imagine a, a line that will fit the data set as best as possible to kind of tell the big story of what's going on here. And a good general rule of thumb is to try and get as many points above that line as are below that line. So get it to kind of match right through the middle of that data set. So if I look in here, seems like all the data is kind of going generally this way. So I'm going to put in a line that does something like so. It does look like it should be a straight line. Um, it's not really a curved trend. And there's going to be my line of best fit. So yours might be slightly different than mine. There's no exact perfect line. But again, I'm trying to balance what's going on with the data and talk about the trend. So if I'm going to describe this, I would say there is a week, because the data points are spread out far from the line, positive. Positive because it's increasing um, relationship between reading and writing scores. Oops. In this case, I'm looking for outliers as well, and. There's some points that are kind of off on their own a little bit, but like this guy, but I wouldn't call that an outlier because he's still sort of following the trend. I mean, he's got other points that are equally far from the line. He's not the only one out there. Maybe if I had a point as far away as that, I'd call it an outlier. But with these, you know, they're, they're sort of there, but I wouldn't necessarily call them outliers because they still kind of fit within the trend. So I might just say here, there are no obviously distinct outliers. And then putting this into words, the higher the reading score, the higher the writing score. generally. So again, it's not true for everyone, but that's sort of the trend that we see following here. Again, it's weak, it's not incredibly great, but that's okay. That's what we would say. And for our next one, we're looking at um, Nevada, and this is talking about the elevation. So again, that's how high up, like a high elevation would be the top of Mount Hutt, low elevation is Christchurch. Um, and your mean annual temperature, kind of how warm it is on average throughout the year. So if I'm going to put on a line of best fit here, I'm noticing that this data set kind of generally trends downward. There's a weird point out here that I'd probably call an outlier. So I might decide to kind of ignore that while I'm drawing my line of best fit. And I'm just going to try to put a line on that sort of matches again what the data is generally doing. And it generally looks like it's doing something like that. So. Looking at these data points, hmm, it's not spectacular, it's not a super strong relationship, but I'd say it's pretty moderate. They're way closer to the line and generally following the trend a lot better than, say for instance, this relationship here, which was rather weak. So, I'd say there is a moderate relationship between the elevation in Nevada. So here you're trying to be as specific as possible, so we have to talk about the variables, the elevation in Nevada, and the mean annual oops, temperature. Um, so the higher the el or sorry the elevation 
what do we say about the temperature? So the higher you are in elevation here at 2,000 meters, generally the mean annual temperature is lower compared to being at a low elevation of 500 with a mean annual temperature of 20. So the higher the elevation, the lower the mean annual temp. Um, there appears to be one outlier. that is far from the trend. And let's be specific, because they generally are looking for that. So, of all the points on here, I want to know that you actually know what you're talking about. So tell me, which point is the outlier? I mean, you can circle it and draw a line to it, but you could also give me the values here. So at roughly, you know, 500 meters in elevation, or 490 meters in elevation, at 490 meters and a temp of 11 degrees Celsius. So this, for areas that had the similar elevation, it's actually got a much lower temperature. And one more thing that comes up from time to time is um, if a town in Nevada was at an elevation of 1500 meters, what range of mean annual temperatures might you expect? So part of the big story for this is, you know, making predictions as well. And if we think about it, this graph, the big story, the line of best fit, is telling me the higher I am in elevation, the lower my temperature is generally. So if I was going to predict, I know I'm going to go camping at 1500 meters someplace. I'm going to go to 1500 meters and look at the data set that are right in that area. So that's kind of this in there. All those data points are roughly at 1500 meters, and you can see there's some variation in temperature. They're not all exactly the same temp. So I don't want to predict an actual individual value, but kind of a range of values that I might expect to see if I'm camping at the altitude, given other information on the graph. So I'll take kind of the lowest and kind of the highest in that range and estimate using those. So that's, I don't know, roughly 8 degrees to roughly 13 degrees. Celsius. So I'm not going to tell myself exactly the exact perfect temperature it's going to be, but I might say at 1500 meters, it's likely my annual temperature will be somewhere on average between 8 and 13 degrees Celsius. So when you're asking to make predictions on scatter graphs, it's good to look at the data that's been given to you and kind of use that range of values that are in there. Um, and for this particular situation, I'd be relatively confident in my prediction. Um, because that's a pretty big range and I'm kind of covering a lot of things, but you know, I could have an outlier as well, so I'm not 100% confident. I wouldn't bet my life or my money on it, but I'd say I've got a pretty good shot at being between 8 and 13 degrees. So I'll let you guys give a go at the rest of the worksheet. Um, you can find answers for that on Alternate if you need them, and get into it.